Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we're joined by Fabio Canelli and Dr. John Cunos from Diagnomed. They're here today to answer some of our questions about how AI is influencing healthcare, why they think that people care more than ever about brain care. We're also going to hear the company's overview. They will touch on EEG scans, the company's new licensing agreements, the new Survive tool, and when we can expect to see it used commercially. And be sure to stick around to the end to hear about the major catalysts that you should be watching out for with Diagnomed. Hey, John. Hey, Fabio. Welcome to The Dive. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us as well, Cassandra. Okay, so Fabio, why don't we start off with you and we'll start talking about everything that's happening with AI, which has been making headlines around the world. How do you think that AI is influencing the healthcare sector? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to defer this to John, but just to give a little color on that, I mean, as you could see, the the broad uh, use of AI for data collection to make certain decisions for any type of medical uh, interventions or diagnostics are really coming to play, which uh, ultimately increases the accuracy of certain indications that would be diagnosed and to help treat, but also uh, reduces the overall healthcare costs that uh, the U.S. kind of bears on uh, as a growing cost going uh, uh, for several years now and ongoing. So it's having an impact on, on that. But John, go ahead if you want to elaborate more. Sure. Uh, AI in medicine and healthcare, it's already here. So anytime you go to a um, a clinic at one of the big pharmacy chains, uh, usually there'll be a nurse practitioner. The nurse practitioner will record the uh, the person's symptoms, take certain vitals, type them into a, a, a computer program, which will then uh, spit out a diagnosis and recommend treatment, including drugs. So uh, that reduces costs, it improves accuracy. So AI and healthcare is here now. It's just a matter of uh, what can we do with it that we haven't already done with it. And in addition to using it for uh, diagnoses and recommending treatments, uh, AI has, has for a number of years now been prominent in uh, discovery of new drugs, uh, new molecules that can be uh, helpful because there's a, a huge huge range of possibilities of molecules from various plants uh, and uh, that can be tested for medicinal properties. And AI is in a better position than humans are to, to examine and uh, compute the likelihood of different uh, possible molecules being therapeutic for, for different diseases. So AI is here to stay for, for medicine. From apps to supplements, brain care has muscled in on the wellness market. Why do you guys think that more people are conscious about their brains compared to the previous generation? People are living longer and they're seeing their uh, their parents and grandparents, uh, grandparents suffering from various uh, age-related neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, uh, I think they're concerned not only for their parents and grandparents, but they're also concerned for themselves. The younger people are concerned for themselves uh, to uh, avoid uh, these neurodegenerative diseases or at least forestall them as much as possible, uh, especially during the pandemic. People uh, worked from home during the lockdown. Uh, they took care of elders and, and saw up close uh, and on a day-to-day -day basis the kinds of problems that uh, they suffered. Also, people I think nowadays are very concerned with optimizing their brain health in the moment to get maximum performance uh, at work and just in, in their lives. And if they can detect that there are um, problems or or uh, that their brain health is not optimal for their age, uh, they like to know it and they like to 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 know what to do to optimize their brain health. Okay, now let's move on and talk about Diagnomed. Can you give us a high-level overview of the company? Yeah, sure, Cassandra. I mean, Diagnomed, we're focused on on development and commercialization of our brain health platform, which is called Survive. Um, and what it does leverages AI or artificial intelligence, and what we do is to to dive for for collecting brain age and 
also valuing monitoring brain health for those who have mental health and neurodegenerative or disorders, but it's not limited to those as well. Uh, what it does is that survive, which is actually a combination of word of uh, uh, cervello or cervello, which is an Italian means brain, and then AI, obviously artificial intelligence. So we combine the two to make it survive as a trademark. Um, and what it does is it uses an electrical polygogram or EEG device uh, in combination with the digital brain health uh, uh, software to predict and monitor brain age and then provide it, which will help to provide actionable kind of insights and tools to either diagnose, potentially prevent and improve a person's brain health. So with that, uh, what it does is it can assess whether the brain is aging more quickly, slowly, uh, and also potentially see if it's in reversing, uh, which then captures all these different aspects of brain health uh, with their software to um what it does, it provides an output of a patient risk score, uh, such as like Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's, and then it will provide that kind of actual data to generate, to implement these kind of personal lines or, or intervention uh, uh, plans, uh, which with the patient and doctors would work together to help improve uh, their brain health. How much can the EEG scans tell us about our brains, especially in terms of brain age? A lot. So EEG is actually the oldest brain scanning technique. I mean, they started, they discovered the human electroencephalogram back in the 1920s and with crude equipment. But uh, there have been, uh, in the, especially in the last 20 to 30 years, an ongoing at an accelerated rate, uh, improvements and developments in EEG recording. So now we have better hardware so we can record signals more accurately and more easily from people. We have new signal processing techniques that allow us to extract much more information from these signals than could be done even a few years ago. So the difference between, say, EEG and MRI, so the kind of MRI that you would get if you, if you, you know, uh, hurt your knee or hurt your shoulder and they take a picture or an x-ray, uh, that's a static image of the tissue. EEG doesn't show a static image of the tissue. EEG shows brain functioning. It shows how the brain is operating on a millisecond by millisecond basis. So it provides that kind of functional information that uh, you might not be able to get from an MRI or, or an X-ray. And again, the technology is improving at a very, very rapid clip. What does your revenue model look like? Yeah, so really what it would be based on the survey, uh, on survey the, the service providing, the service provider that would be installed in uh, our, 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 our partners' locations, like in clinics or such as physicians, uh, licensed professionals like psychiatrists or neuro neurologists and whatnot, um, and you know, potentially down the road in pharmacies. And what we would do is we would license our, our, our device including with our protocol, and then we charge an upfront fee for that, and then a recurring license or fees for uh, visits from, from patients and whatnot. And then we'd have our, our mobile or application subscription or monthly to kind of monitor the brain age or brain health of, of the individuals. And then the other side of it is our clinical services that can be used as a diagnostic kit for part of a clinical trial, whatnot. So added information for pharmaceutical companies looking to see whether their drug is, is kind of is functioning uh, in terms of a, a person's brain health and whatnot. And, and then with that, that will be in our Morton North America strategy. And then we'll look to partner with international distributors uh, for our global um, uh, commercialization clients. You recently entered into a license agreement with the University of Miami. Can you walk us through the agreement? And how will this be incorporated with Servi? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a simple agreement. It's just a, a license agreement that we'll add on to as part of our brain health applications uh, for our uh, subscription base. So what it does, it's, a, it's actually a novel brain health platform that evaluates and diagnoses and monitors a person's brain health, such as those and eventually who some of the guys Alzheimer's or related dementias. Um, and this was, this was actually invented by Dr. James Galvin. Uh, he's a professor of neurology at, and psychiatry and founding director of Brain Health Center at the University of Miami. So what this does in terms of incorporating into our into survive is that 
the the brain health platform, which features a, a novel brain functions and assessments and tools to evaluate some uh, the overall brain health of a person. So it'll take take it can take uh, and take these uh, uh, inputs from these those little assessments, assessments and then provide a score, if you will, a patient risk score, which then allows for the doctor or the the licensed professional to say, okay, here's some uh, potential tailored interventions or or, or treatment uh, plans that would, they they would uh, assess on the on the patients. Um, so with that, with the fully functional survival would not only detect the brain age but also provide overall brain health uh, and allow the patient doctor to work together so that it has the ability to uh, uh, evaluate the uh, or delay or prevent say the onset of cognitive decline in patients and there, thereby improving the quality of life of patient and also giving the tools that these caregivers would need to to assist their patients. Could you provide us an estimated timeline as to when we will see Survi commercially? Yeah, so we're looking at initially roll out in the second half next year as a kind of our beta commercial program. Uh, we'll be uh, to work with these uh, uh, clinics throughout the U.S. Uh, so what we'll be doing in the next uh, quarter is partnering with our with these clinics to get them educated to uh, and, and trained to do to to. Uh, launch the program uh, at least initially with their brain health uh, as well as with the brain age part of it but that will seek to do that in the second half of next year i'm sorry this year excuse me you announced that you will use chat gpt in your brain age product suite what led you to this decision well it's not necessarily the chat it's the gpt3 kind of uh, uh program which is obviously from uh, open ai and this was this is something that we'll explore as an additive to our brain health platform, uh, and this was very complimentary because work's already been done at Drexel University, where Dr. John Cunius is is is, is a professor at. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, researchers, Dr. Wang Lang, is has worked on um, uh, with GPT three uh, for spontaneous speech to detect certain. Uh, uh, neurological disorders, neurodegenerative disorders. So there was work that was done with uh, early stages of Alzheimer's and whatnot. So this is something that we will incorporate down the road into our whole brain health platform as part of a detection a detection option uh, to kind of provide further validation or evidence of someone's uh, uh, potential disease that they they may have or early stages of, uh, of them having it. And then it will, again, it's, it'll allow the, the, the doctor then to proceed further diagnostic uh, um, evaluations for the patients. What are the key milestones or major catalysts that investors should be watching out for with Diagnomed? Yeah, I think ultimately is is, is it's pretty simple. It's our it's our launch, uh, initial launch of our, of our service uh, program for Survi. Uh, for brain health, and that will come in the second half of next year, uh, which then will, uh, second half of this year, excuse me, uh, with that, then the, we'll just focus on building our, our partner network for install and installation and for a service provider to gain the traction of subscriptions from patients. Um, and then we would go full throttle in the new year and expanding our service uh, throughout North America and also uh the globe, specifically in Europe and in Asia. Perfect. All right. Well, that's all we have for you two today. Thank you, John. Thank you, Fabio, so much for joining us today. Great. Thank you, Cassandra, for having us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We will be back again tomorrow with the latest news and updates. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell and subscribing below before you leave us. Bye.